Okay, thank you. Thank you, Greenbelt, uh, for hosting me. Um, I hope you can all hear me. I, I'm afraid the soundtrack that we have here was, uh, I'm not sure it's the right kind of music for what I'm about to share. Um, but do bear with me. Um, subject matter, what I want to share with you today. Five things that you didn't know about a wall. Now, some of this you might actually know, to be honest, yeah? So, so do bear with me. But I'm going to share with you a little bit about what I think about brick walls. Now, why do I have an obsession with brick walls? Or a stone wall, or it could be any concrete wall. Um, I'm a mural artist, I'm a painter, and I travel around different places painting, bringing a bit of color into people's neighborhoods, into people's lives, and painting something onto a public space, a public surface that might bring some color and something of meaning and of value, perhaps in neighborhoods, in urban metropolises that we exist in. Um, so as an artist, I see myself as battling with the urban space. I see a physical wall or a structure. I just saw one just behind here and I was just observing it, in fact. It was a great texture and it looked beautiful, but I wouldn't paint it. Some walls are just not meant to be painted. Yeah, you just have to respect that wall, okay? So a lot of the time I'm battling with the wall to dominate the space, to create something and let the color flow across the wall to communicate something that connects with people here as well as inside here. But before anything, I really want to break it down to you about the purpose of a wall. This canvas that I take as the surface that I choose to paint on. I paint canvas as well, but nothing beats painting onto a brick wall. Now, sometimes I think a brick wall really gets a rough deal, to be honest with you. Because we talk about walls, uh, the phrase we hear, it's like talking to a brick wall. And I ask the question, why is it that a brick wall gets such a rough deal? Because we don't say it's like talking to a concrete floor or it's like talking to a plastered ceiling. How come the ceiling and the floor gets, gets a better deal and the brick wall is the one that we kind of see as something which is worthless, right? It's always kind of puzzled me that has. So why is it different for a wall? I think walls are certainly something which are more visible. They're very imposing in that they are, I suppose they're at eye level in a sense, so they kind of get noticed a lot more than a ceiling or a floor. So walls also are kind of structures that surround us in the urban space. Walls that kind of force us to navigate around them, these structures, and the definition of a wall being a continuous vertical brick or stone structure that encloses or divides an area of land. So these structures, concrete in the concrete jungles we exist in, force us to navigate and how we move, how we physically navigate through a space is governed by, by these structures. But the definitions, sorry, the, the, the social purpose, if you like, of, of these walls are actually many more than just a pile of bricks. One of those, to begin with, is to protect. Protect us from the elements, if you like, from, 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 from weather conditions, rain, sun, etc., etc. And we take it for granted. We take these walls for granted because you only need to speak to a homeless person or look at the condition of a homeless person and then we really value the bricks that surround us. Now these bricks also liberate us in how they become a safe haven, a sanctuary for us. When we, after a long journey, return to our homes and we enter into the home. It's something we really often take for granted. And only when you don't have that where you, are you able to really appreciate the sanctuary and the liberation we experience when we have four walls that protect us and provide comfort and tranquility in our space. They also divide us. They have various intentions when someone builds a wall or a city authority builds a wall, but they, we might be told that they're created for protection, but also they can be hostile. They can become symbols of terror and intimidation. 
So a wall might be created to divide us in order to protect us, but also they become symbols of terror, as I mentioned. A wall can be an Im- something that imprisons us. Now, we know about the t- towering walls at Her Majesty's prisons, but also probably one of the most famous walls in this moment is the wall in, that separates Israel and Palestine and Gaza in particular, which is described as being the largest open-air prison where the walls just surround and contain a whole people, where people who go into a locality are controlled and people who come out are also controlled. So it really is like an, a giant open-air prison. But walls can also communicate, and this is the last thing I want to share with you really, about how they can become important structures. And going back really to the beginning of mankind's history, ancient rock carvings, um, caves, Egyptian hieroglyphics, the walls of Pompeii, etc., etc. And this basic idea of communicating by putting something onto a public space goes tens of thousands of years back. But if we fast forward to modern times, we see walls where billboards and marketing companies want to capitalize on these public structures by putting their products, usually products, we, let's face it, we don't really need in our lives, upon these wall structures to communicate something to the masses. But obviously there's a, a struggle against that where people want to subvert that and perhaps control the visual landscape by putting something, and this is where my journey as a graffiti artist going back for the past few decades now, has been to try to inject something back into the visual space, something that might have something of value, communicating certain truths perhaps, and that conflict that occurs when that takes place, that conflict where perhaps the struggle between the power and the authorities that perhaps own these public spaces, the wall can often be a symbol of authority and power The fact that this wall was created here by the governing body or the the, the structure of of a place. And when someone takes back that space and says, no, I'm going to put whatever I want to put on that wall. Or I want to paint something on there that would speak about the reality on the ground as opposed to what is the officially sanctioned kind of messages that might be being put out there. So the idea about communicating, communicating by the visual, by painting onto a brick wall, is something that has gone back as far as we can remember. In fact, every single one of us has a desire to paint or to leave a message or communicate by scratching or scribbling into a surface that isn't really designed to be done so. I'm just looking if anyone has a pen in their hand now. Because if you did, you'd be doodling. When you're on the phone, you're doodling. So it's a basic instinct of ours to express something, to write something and communicate so that maybe people will one day stumble across that. I'd say a question that why is it that when a piece of art has to go onto the side of a building, Is that the failure of an architect or the designer of a building in completing the facade of this structure? Because if this something had to be added to it, then it makes you question that was that job complete? Why did the piece of art have to be just cut and pasted onto this structure? Why was the color not there in the first place? Do architects, do town regeneration teams do they look at color and the impact in the public space? Do we, do we have a input on how our cities are shaped around us? Because my argument would be that perhaps we resign ourselves a little bit and feel that this public, the spaces we come from, and maybe a lot of us come from big cities where we have concrete jungles, that we don't feel we have the power to shape and bring color and have an influence on how our cities look. So, to really end this, 
I want to say that I see walls as something that stand for a long period of time. People come and go over decades and years, hundreds of years, but walls often stand tall. And if only they could speak, what would they say? I say a wall is like an old, an old grandfather, or it can also be an enemy, depending on the purpose of that wall. So thank you for listening. Um, appreciate your time. Thank you.